All right, everyone, we're going to get started. And I want to thank you all for sharing your lunchtime with us. And we'll be discussing employee parking, what's new and different. Uh, my name is Georgina Arias. I'm with UCSF uh, Transportation. I'm the Transportation Demand Manager, helping you with your commutes to your, um, to your job place, to your workplace. Uh, today, I'm joined by Joe Brocker with parking and, with, and Arlene um, to help me out with this presentation. I'd like to remind you that CLS is hosting several short webinars to present scoops of information to get our community up to date on the goings on at UCSF. For event information and how to join, go online to the UCSF events calendar at calendar.ucsf.edu and look for the scoop logo. There are two coming up, so log online and see if those interest you. We have a little quiz for you. Please put your answer in the chat. What are the top three reasons that UCSF faculty, employees, and learners choose to drive alone? Please put your answer in the chat box. I see schedule, I see flexibility, convenience, I see people have obligations before or after work. Time, money. All right, thank you everyone. Based on our annual commute survey, the top three reasons that UCSF faculty, employees, and learners choose to drive is number one for flexibility in their schedule. That is most important. Driving alone is also the fastest way to get to work. And driving alone is also the best way to ensure social distancing and be in a clean, safe environment. So thank you for your answers. Regionally, there's been a lot going on that changes in transportation and I wanna share those with you today. Regional transit agencies are operating um, at or near you know, pre-pandemic levels. This means that Muni, BART, AC Transit, Caltrain, they're operating at at or near pre-pandemic levels. Uh, freeway congestion is worsening, especially in the East Bay where so many highways funnel into the Bay Bridge. Extended work from home, particularly in Silicon Valley tech employers leads to less traffic congestion in the South Bay and on the peninsula. This work from home means there is less traffic on highway and it encourages more people to drive because it's faster compared to using public transit. Commuters switching back to transit depends on several factors, such as home location, price elasticity to tolls, gas, and parking, and time sensitivity. What does this mean to UCSF? Regional traffic conditions have an impact on how we choose to get to work. We anticipate UCSF commuters will switch back to transit gradually, as traffic congestion worsens, driving becomes more painful, and the transit becomes attractive again. In the near term, we expect the parking situation will continue to be challenging. I'm sure many of you are feeling it right now at Parnassus. Shuttle services will continue at current levels until demand increases significantly. The UCSF system's commitment to sustainability began in 2003, and the scope of the sustainability practices policy has expanded to include transportation and employee commuting. UCSF's goal is a 10% reduction in the drive alone rate relative to our 2015 rate. We want to keep our drive alone rate below 28.8%. We are currently meeting that at 25.5%, and we want to continue to closely monitor that to make sure we are in compliance. What affects you even more are changes in traffic patterns and the construction that is occurring all around us. This construction means that we are losing parking spaces and staff and patients are moving to different locations and we need to adapt to the changes in demand. Transportation conducts an annual commute survey to monitor the proportions of different travel methods. This information helps us to adjust our services and to report our progress towards our goals. I'd like to induce, uh, introduce Joe Rocker from Parking, and he'll give us the lowdown that you're really here for. Joe, take it away. Thanks, Georgina. 
Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, before I start, I just want to kind of reiterate that the information that we're covering is, is all available on our website. And as at the end of the presentation, we'll provide our contact information. So if you have any questions, you can always follow up that way. I, I mentioned that because as we see, sometimes the questions come in flurries in the chat. I didn't want anyone to worry. They can always get the answer to their questions. Um, for our presentations. This first slide is just a quick summary of the total number of parking locations we have in San Francisco for our UCSF campuses. Um, as you can see, it's just under 6,000 parking spaces total. Uh, the, most, the most space is available between Parnassus and Mission Bay, uh, our two primary campuses, but uh, about 6,000 spaces in all uh, and a combination, as you can see, of sort of parking garages or sort of open surface lots. In terms of kind of additional options and insight, um, you know, Georgina was just referencing some of the areas that are a little bit more occupied, a little bit more of a space crunch for us. So we always do a couple of things. We encourage uh, UCSF employees to use our own facilities that are a little bit underutilized. And they're listed here. So on the Parnassus campus, the Beckman Vision lot, the West Side Dental Surface lot typically have um, available space. Same is true on the Mission Bay campus for the Third Street Garage and the Community Center Garage at the Rudder Center. So those are the four areas that typically you have um, some additional capacity and can find a space much easier. We're just trying to encourage employees to, as much as possible, avoid facilities that are utilized heavily by patients. So the MU garage at Parnassus, the Mission Bay Hospital garage and lots at Mission Bay, those are always our busiest. They're almost always at or near capacity. In addition to that, we also want to provide some information about some facilities that UCSF employees can use that aren't actually operated by UCSF. Um, the Keys R lot and the Parnassus Heights Medical Center on the Parnassus campus um, and the 1800 Owen Street garage, which is right across the street from the Mission Bay Hospital garage. Um, these facilities might work great. The rates are competitive with our own rate structure for our UCSF garages. They're convenient and they have a lot more available space than we do. So for employees that that are kind of work at one campus predominantly, if they're at Parnassus every day or at Mission Bay every day, these might these options might work out really well for them. And these locations also accept our pre-tax uh, commuter MasterCard. So our rate structure, daily rate schedule here, uh, these rates have been in place since July 1 of 2020. These are patient visitor rates, so $5 per hour. The daily maximum is $35. Um, patients that have an ADA placard can pay a daily max of seven. We added these two rates at the bottom during the pandemic as, um, as our customers' needs changed and a lot of folks weren't on campus five days and will continue to not be on campus five days per week. So. We offer a daily 24 hour discounted rate of $24 for employees and at some locations, a $12 daily discount for students. Monthly parking rates. Um, this is this slide also again is pretty straightforward. One of our objectives as we worked through the pandemic and are now working our way out of the pandemic was to really simplify our program. And we've gotten some questions on previous presentations uh, regarding, hey, I need a pass for MCB lot, or I need a pass for 2420 Sutter at Mount Zion. We've worked away from kind of the 85 or 90 different permit type options. Basically, if you purchase that 24 seven pass for $302, you have access to all of our facilities, uh, no matter which location you prefer. So. Uh, we still offer a student monthly pass uh, due to its popularity and um, location at Parnassus. We're still offering 
uh, kind of a surge wood only monthly parking pass. For some of our non-traditional hours, um, swing shift employees, we offer an N or L monthly pass that have some time restrictions, but are also good at all of our facilities. Um, and then a motorcycle pass at $73 per month. Again, this information is all available on our website. Uh, so it's there for you when you need it. So pay by phone, um, we've been using, our customers have been using a lot of pay by phone kind of through the pandemic. And now that we're kind of working our way through it on the other side, you don't have to use pay by phone. It's not a requirement but it's a really easy, convenient way to pay for parking. Um, it's, in, in many respects, it's just like every other app you download to your phone. You simply find the app in your app store, download it. Uh, you have to enter some information, an email address, uh, vehicle information and payment information. And then once you've done that, when you're ready to park with us, you simply enter the pay by phone location number that we have listed here. 401608. You select either daily parking or monthly parking. You literally click a pay and park button and you're done. You're all set. And again, that can be used at any one uh, of our UCSF parking locations. Free tax commuter benefits. So we had a scoop yesterday on this topic and Again, it's also really easy to use. It's a little bit different than how we handled pre-tax benefits prior to the pandemic, uh, but it's as simple as this. You would go to our commuterbenefits.com, the website for Eden Red, um, sign up, set the amount of money you want deducted from your paycheck. What happens is that money is then loaded to an Eden Red MasterCard that you will receive. And then you simply use the MasterCard as your payment method through pay by phone or when you wanna pay for your parking at a cashier exit or in a Calais pay station. So it takes about a month from when you first sign up. So as we sit here today, if you sign up by April 23rd, you'll see your first payroll deduction or deductions in May and the money is available for you to use by June for any parking expenses. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, we encourage everyone, regardless of how you get to UCSF, to plan ahead. There are more patients and uh, employees coming to campus. Uh, we ask that you utilize parking lots in the vicinity or non-UCSF facilities, um, which are at comparable rates. Explore your commuting options. If you choose to play, take public transit, UCSF shuttles, carpool, vanpool, it's a great, great way to share the ride cut down on expenses, perhaps it's um, a time savings for you. There are options to bike, walk, drive, and uh, use shared vehicles or low emission vehicles. We have EV charging stations in our garages. And as always, you can save money with pre-tax commuter benefits when taking public transit or parking. And we will take questions now. Thank you guys. One of the questions that I saw in the chat was related to Tidelands parking. Joe, would you be able to give an update on Tidelands? Sure. For those folks that work at the 654 Minnesota building, if they need access to Tidelands, they would just initiate that by uh, emailing us at transportation, the email address provided here, letting us know they need access. Once we confirm their work location, will issue them an access card that will allow them to get into the Tidelands garage. Once they're in the Tidelands garage, they would pay the same way all of us pay, using pay by phone for daily or monthly parking. Okay, and speaking of pay by phone, I did see another question that was related to advanced telephone reservations. Um, I think this might be referring to pay by phone, but maybe it would be helpful to just to go over again how the pay by phone works. Sure, so it's, it's basically real time. So uh, when you open the app, once you've downloaded it and set up an account, when you're ready to park, you simply open the app, enter this UCSF location number, and you'll be prompted to select 
there's a drop down where you can select either by the month or by the day. Uh, you can select multiple days if you're paying by day. Um, once you've made those selections, you literally just click a pay and park button and you're all set. So how do we get the app? You can just download the app from your app store on your iPhone or your Android device. What's it called, pay by phone or UCSF parking or what's the name? Number one right there, pay by phone? Yes. That's the name of the app. Thank you. Sure. Okay, another question I saw in the chat a bit earlier was where is the month pass valid at? The $302 monthly option is valid at all of our facilities. Great, thank you. Um, I have another question here about student parking at Mount Zion. So the, the student daily rate uh, of $12 per day is available at the 2420 Sutter Street garage. Great. Thanks, Joe. Again, if anybody has additional questions, put them in the chat. I'm gonna look through and see if there is any other questions here. Okay, here's one for you, Georgina. There's a question about carpools from the East Bay, if you wanna give an overview of some tips for carpooling from the East Bay. Absolutely. Um, I would start at my commute. It's mycommute.ucsf.edu and we'll put it in the chat. It's a great place to plan your trip and also to match with other people who want to carpool or vanpool or perhaps find a bike buddy. Using my commute, you can chat with people who have a similar schedule as yourself, introduce yourself, say you're interested in carpooling, um, and that email will go straight into their UCSF email address account. Um, and that way you can start chatting, you can decide you wanna take a ride and give it a try. Mycommute.ucsf.edu is a great place to match with other UCSF colleagues and students. Great, thanks Georgina. A couple more for you, Joe. Um, I see a question here about alternate vehicles. Would you like to go over how that works? Sure. For monthly parkers that need to register an alternate vehicle, just send us an email at transportation and provide us the primary license plate number for your first vehicle and your alternate vehicle license plate and we can get that squared away for you. Great. Thank you. Another one here about parking in surface lots at Mission Bay. Joe, do you just want to mention some of the surface lots are, that are available to employees? Sure, if we're specifically talking about surface parking at Mission Bay, there's the Nelson Rising Lane number four lot right outside of our child care, and the Mission Hall lot um, right off of Third Street. Those are available surface parking options in our Mission Bay uh, campus. I, I would say that the most available parking at Mission Bay is the Third Street garage, and even more so than that, the Community Center garage there's always typically a good amount of availability in those two facilities. Great, thanks Joe. Another person is asking, what is the Surge Woods permit? It's a surface lot up Medical Center Way, kind of on, on up the hill at Parnassus, kind of behind the hospital. So it's, it's a little bit less convenient than parking at um, either the MU garage or the ACC garage, or even the surface lots at Westside and Beckman. So it's kind of up Medical Center way, kind of behind the hospital, kind of on the hill. Um, and it's the monthly pass we sell for Surge is only valid at Surge. Thanks, Joe. Also another question here about any parking available at Montgomery Street. So uh, UCSF does not operate any garages or parking facilities at Montgomery Street. So it would be kind of up to what's available in that marketplace.
Great, thanks, Joe. Um, and then also, if somebody does park at Surge Woods, um, shuttle service does operate to get people to the Parnassus Heights campus from Surge. Okay, looks like we got a couple more minutes here. If anyone has any additional questions, feel free to type them in the chat. Oh, I see another one here about the monthly parking pass. And the question is, can it be used at more than one campus location? Absolutely. Again, that, that monthly pass at 302 per month is good at all UCSF facilities, 24-7. Great, thanks, Joe. I think we have covered everything in the chat so far. All right, well then I'm gonna thank everyone for joining us during their lunchtime. Um, as always, hold on, let me not switch the page just yet. Feel free to email us at transportation at ucsf.edu or give us a call and we can answer any more of your questions. There's a lot of wonderful information on our transportation website. Don't forget that CLS is hosting other webinars. So please take a look at the calendar of events for UCSF and see if you'd like to join those. Thank you for your lunch time, everyone. Um, we did record this session and we'll be posting that on our transportation webpage very soon. Thank you all Great. for your time. Thank you all.